we're using mini brains as computers. All right, so human brain cells in a dish learn to play Pong. This is wild. So let's take a look at the actual paper. What I want to know is how, how is this 2D neural network playing Pong? Like the neurons are hooked up to a computer mouse somehow and they're using it? Like what does that, what does that mean? So here's the image. This looks like a bunch of neurons on a Petri dish. So this is actually how they make these neurons. They get skin cells from donors and they turn them into stem cells by giving them a specific chemical. And then those stem cells can be turned into all sorts of cells, red blood cells, muscle cells. But importantly for this, they can be turned into brain cells or neurons. So they took these human neurons in a Petri dish and they connected them to a computer so they could play Pong. That already sounds insane, but what they found is really, really weird. This is a comparison of one of the latest supercomputers and the human brain. So the supercomputer takes 21 megawatts of power and the human brain takes something like 10 to 20. So it's literally a million times less power requirements for the human brain to do the same calculations. The dish brain system was developed to harness neuronal computation. Who, who came up with this idea? They just put a chip on top of a bunch of these neurons. This just feels like it should be so much more complicated. Microelectrode arrays like this are what we use in brain computer interfaces. We already know that you could put one of these microelectrode arrays into a human being. You could see that they can use a mouse with their brain just by learning from the feedback systems. I guess what's really insane is that you go from, you know, a, a human with a full brain being able to control a mouse to like a few neurons in a dish being able to control a mouse. I mean, we don't know what else these neurons are doing if they're thinking or, or conscious, but they, they can also control a Pong game. These neurons aren't just firing electricity and getting lucky with the Pong paddle. They are actually learning over time. You can see that for the red here, that's neurons, human neurons they're increasing over each experiment. And you can see the same for mouse neurons that they also tested. So after they published this paper, the next thing they did was not like go, wow, we've made a completely wild discovery. Let's do some very serious research to help the human race. They were like, instead, let's get these neurons drunk and see how they play Pong. That was their next bet. And honestly, uh, I love it. I love, this sounds like a great time. I would love to join this lab. Okay, so that's a bunch of neurons in a Petri dish, but how do we get to mini brains being used as computers? So these scientists had the idea that if we've gotten neurons in a dish to be able to play Pong, maybe we can get a brain organoid to do AI computing. All right, so again, they used the same kind of chip here, this like microelectrode array chip. Um, but now instead of the neurons, they've got this organoid, this like mini brain. So in this case, they're talking about brain organoids. I first heard about these when I was working at the Sock Institute. I got really lucky and I got a position where I got to do some basic imaging on a cool autism research study. And my mentor came to me one day and was like, check this out. He had a jar with one of those magnetic string rods in it. And inside there's something just spinning in the jar. And I look into it and I'm like, whoa, those are like tiny little brains. And not only were they tiny little brains, but they were tiny, brains made out of human neurons, tiny human brains. This is really cool because it's starting to replace animal testing for, for certain types of tests. And it's also getting us closer to testing things like neural implants, like the one that Neuralink is working on and the Utah microarray. They always have these crazy names like BrainAware. This is called, they called it BrainAware. Okay, so here was the first task they gave BrainAware. They asked it to solve a nonlinear chaotic equation. And you can see that the brain aware was actually not as accurate as the artificial neural network with long-term memory, but it got 10 times less training than the artificial neural network. And again, these mini brains are actually learning. And the researchers were able to show that because they blocked synaptic plasticity, which is the way that neurons learn with a chemical blocker. And they could see that there was no learning happening. So the researchers here really say that they're building living AI hardware because who knows, we've got a lot of uh, AI that we're developing and it's taking up tons of computing power, um, tons of energy. It's super inefficient compared to the human brain. And so maybe we can solve that problem by using human brains.
is what they're saying. Some might argue it's the Matrix. It's, it's really a lot better because it's not like there's a lot of robots turning us into like brains in a vat and we're like living in a simulation. Uh, it's, it's us doing it. So we're, we're the ones with the brains in a vat. So I think it's, so that's good. That's good, I think. Yeah, we're in control here.